Welcome back to the Football Today podcast brought to you by Betfair, who are on your side this EPL season. I'm your host, Liam McCallion, sometimes known as Ben Chilwell, also known as the Stats Guy. As always, I'm joined by Marcus Barzano. He's in a lovely Spider-Man 2 Atletico Madrid kit. Gotta bring it back out. I had to test him on his Atletico Madrid knowledge if he's allowed to wear an Atletico Madrid kit. Did I pass? You passed. You, oh, you actually you. had a few players. I forgot even Conor Gallagher went there. I do miss, <laughs> do miss him at Chelsea. Conor Gallagher, the boy. The boy the from... Uh, he won Atletico Madrid's Player of the Month. He did. Um, he's he's kill- he, In the first was, month. As a Chelsea fan, I'm very sad that we had to let him go. But who would you rather right now? Oh, Enzo Fernandez or Conor Gallagher? <sighs> I'm, I'm no, I think you know my answer. Mm. I'd rather Conor Gallagher. Interesting. But that might Very be... But by the end of the career, maybe Enzo. Maybe Enzo. What do you reckon? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm torn. I love Conor Gallagher. Uh, but I'll go with Enzo for now. Oh, okay. Go support the boys. There you go. Today, we're going to cover the top football and EPL news, the best Betfair back or lay bets for the EPL futures as well, because there's an yep. international break. Sadly, there's an international oh. break. There's already been three, and it's November. I know. I know. That is a joke, but is a anyway... Joke. We're going to yeah, have a look at the EPL future bets, so that's going to be a bit of fun. Yep. Title handicap tips as well, that's uh, through mm. Betfair as well. And finish with some picks for the biggest games that are coming up across the international break, including a, a few funny games, a few funny matchups that we'll uh, touch on. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Football Today podcast. Follow all the socials, Football Today AU on TikTok and Football Today Australia on Facebook and Instagram. All right, we've got through all the... Uh, Festi- oh, was it well, not like festivities? All, uh, all the what's the word I was looking for? Oh, I, I got no know. idea. Anyway, Jeez. we're getting into oh, around this is the ground. Bad, bad start. <laughs> Great start around the grounds. Starting off, Man formalities. City. Formalities. That's what I meant to say. Why did I think of festivities? Festivities. festivities. <laughs> we're, we're just up and about on today's show. Around the grounds, yep. Man City. We've got to touch on them. Whew. They've lost four straight games across all competitions. Mm. That's the first time ever under Pep Guardiola that's happened. What the hell is going on? They just lost two one to Brighton over the weekend. Yeah. Crazy scenes that Man City just keep losing. They've just been the benchmark for what five or six years now. Yeah, so yeah, they've won. They yeah, hardly they've, ever stopped winning. They've so. won four in a row. So, what do, what's going on there? It's been a bit wild. I don't know. They've uh, they're already five points behind Liverpool. Yep. Alarmingly, it's the goals conceded. Obviously, yeah, without Rodri, yeah. they're a lot less stable. They conceded thirteen, which is the same amount conceded as the likes of Chelsea, Fulham. Ooh. Um, and you compare that to Liverpool, have only conceded six, sitting on the top of the table. So, uh, pretty alarming for for Pep Guardiola. He's basically already ruled them out of the title race. He said, he, um, oh, he's been a bit I've, of a sook. Yeah. He goes, I've won it five seasons in a row. <laughs> it's probably fair to let like another good team win it. <laughs> Get stuffed. He, he was like trying to say, oh, I yeah, know. we'll let the other team win. I know what he's saying. Like, no one can have a go at. Man City, because they had to end eventually. At the end of the day, yeah. Like, it's, I don't think it's over yet. They have to have a season off. They've won. They've been in the race for six years, eight yeah. years, or maybe even eight, eight, eight years. Yeah, true. Because they won, yeah, seven of the last six. Yep. Se- yeah, six of the last seven. Yeah. Six of the last seven. Sorry, <laughs> seven of the last six. <laughs> seven of the last six. <laughs> so no, that one works. But yeah, uh, that's been pretty crazy. Yep. A few people are calling out. Yeah, their defense. They've only had two clean sheets out of their eleven matches in the Premier League, which is wow. very rare because yep. the big part of that is Rodri. We've said it every week. Yep. Is he, the, is he the glue? When Rodri plays, they win. Exactly. And when he hasn't played, he's injured right now. He won the Ballon d'Or, best player in the world. And he's out for the entire season, so not going to look great. And yeah, like, like some of those easy games as well, they're conceding goals. Yeah. Like Ipswich at home, they conceded. Yep. Um, they, con- they conceded to Wolves as well, who mm-hmm. obviously haven't had the best of starts. Yep. But... We're yeah, conceding to Wolves, conceding to... Uh, the, I know it was in the uh, AFL Cup, but Watford, then you're conceding... Brentford, who have been okay, conceding to West Ham, who have been horrible. Yeah. Like, even though a few of them are wins, just their defense is struggling. Kyle Walker's getting called out by a few people in the media as well. Yeah. He's lost his, his touch a little bit. He's still fast. He's, but oh, he's not he's as fast. Not he, as quick. And he's not getting in the right spots, I don't think, on yeah. the uh, fullback position. So, he probably, honestly, this might be a bit of a wild shout, but he would probably be third choice at Chelsea right now. Real, third? He'd probably be behind, oh, behind Gusto and James at right back. Yeah. Yeah. Is that too? Is that too big of a shout? I don't know. That's a good little clip, though. Oh, so no. we're saying <laughs> Kyle Walker is third choice. Would be third choice. right back at Chelsea. Yeah, would he? Maybe. I'll put my I'll put my neck on line. Why not? Yes. Why not? I, I, don't, yes. I don't mind that. I like I like how you uh, roll sometimes on this show. Next one we're going to touch on. I love Ange. I love Ange Ball. Mm, but but we can all laugh at uh, Spurs. <laughs> Spurs continue to be Spursy. This thing of Spursy it should just be in the dictionary. It's like. But yeah, noun or whatever it is. Uh, sorry, not a noun. It would be an adjective <laughs> describing a team that just crumble under bottle. pressure. Bottle. Definition they of They lose to Ipswich Town 2-1 on the weekend at their home stadium, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, yep. and continue. Would've, that would have put them up to third. Oh, <laughs> and where are they now? Around 
Ninth? Ninth or eighth, I think. Let's have a look. They are tenth. <laughs> tenth. <laughs> there you go. So they could have gone to third. I don't know if there is a curse because I believe that Andrew's a really good manager. He's been a bit stubborn, but yeah. the fact that they just lose to these crap teams and then they'll randomly beat a really good team, it's just yep. the classic Spurs way and they it just is. can't get out of the way of it. It is. It, yeah, it's <laughs> been very interesting. And Dom, we put Dominic, we both did. We put Dominic oh, Solanke, yeah. FBL captain. Oh, so, he's you know in what? really good form. Bag the brace. Yep. Against Ipswich at home. Yep. There's going to be goals because they both <laughs> play attacking. Yep. Book it in. And, and unfortunately, it. yep. Yeah, so they, uh, yeah, smash Villa, beat City in the EFL Cup. Yep. Then before that, they lose to Palace, and then on the weekend, they lose to Ipswich Town. There is no consistency no at Tottenham. No consistency at all. And it's very, very frustrating uh, Yeah, for fantasy Premier League managers, for it's Spurs fans. For... But it's very funny uh, from an outsider, like, a Chelsea fan. It's starting to get to the point where I'm feeling sorry for Spurs fans because it's <laughs> just, it it's happens just, every it's been happening single season, and they will be in our future bets with yes, us here. So we'll be, for, be sure to stick around. Stick around for that one. Uh, even that... Yeah, Spurs have just been doing it for so long. When mm. Chelsea were the most dominant, prime Chelsea, they called it, uh, when it was White Hart Lane, they called it three-point lane. Three-point lane. Because you'd go there, the big teams would go there and go, ah, they're supposed to be part of Chelsea the Chelsea would always win there. Chelsea would always win there, and a yep. lot of teams are feeling that at the moment. Like, they shouldn't be losing at home to it Ipswich was, Town. It was a space where Chelsea beat Tottenham three times in eight days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and, that's wild. And that was in that was Thomas Tuchel's era. Uh, oh, Thomas Tuchel, Chelsea. That, yeah. yeah, I was going to say that sounds like my basketball team. We just lost three straight games <laughs> in a row to the same team, Ooh. including finals. But that's that's uh, another podcast that we'll have to get that's into. Got washed. Yeah, we're washed. Let's get Stats Guy's basketball highlights. Just honestly, right well, now. Not, not, not on our football <laughs> show. We need to get your cricket ones on the Cricket Today podcast. Make sure you check that out. I reckon your cricket highlights on there could be right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to select the good ones, though. Actually, and our indoor... Remember how we're going to make an indoor soccer we're team? We're going to make an indoor team. We yeah. should make an indoor team. Gerald's yeah. in. When we can have little oh. highlights and I'll wear a mic, that'd be funny. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah we're doing vlog. that. Football but, today, yeah, vlog. we have so much time on our hands, so we can yeah, do not? Yeah. <laughs> not all right. Next one: Chelsea won, Arsenal won. So draw there. Yep. Ha- you predicted the one-all draw, so you're happy with that. And the goal scorer for Arsenal, who is Martinelli. Martinelli, yeah, he's been in really good form. Yep. Uh, Saka and Palmer both out, held down really well. So Saka, yeah, helped uh, lock Kukurea locked him down. Sorry, Kukurea had locked him down. Got man of the match. Kukurea getting man of the match is wild. Very no, good. Predicted that. Very, and guess who gave it to him? Who? Gary Neville. Really? Uh, Kukurea hater. Yeah, he does hate it to him. He yep. said he was crap. He shouldn't be at that level. And I think since then he's dominated for Spain. For Spain. And, and then he, he... Back into Chelsea yeah. last season yeah. and, and this season he's Did been the, really good. Yeah. I, at the start, thought he was horrible. I thought he didn't track back at all. Yeah. Now he's been so good. He's locked he's down. Good. He's fast. He's yeah. very good. He's got beautiful hair. He's, yeah, it's just a bit of chaos about him. Just in chaos. One one. He sings songs about Australia. Yeah. Or, didn't get dribbled past once in the entire game by anyone. That's awesome. And but kept Zach yeah. at a zero... Zero chances created. Zero so. chances created. Beautiful. Uh, but the, on the other side, Palmer as well. He had that shot early in the first two minutes, the knuckleball. Oh, I thought he was on. Oh. I, was like, I was like, that was nuts. This guy's on. Yeah. He's going to be on today, but to be fair, he didn't really do much. Oh, no. I'm a bit disappointed he didn't get subbed. Who was... Who was uh, I thought Jeff Felix should come on. Jeff Felix, yeah. 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 Um, so, honestly, I think both teams will take a draw, but Arsenal... I think that was a fair result. That Arsenal last, had a couple chances. The last chance of the whole game they probably should have buried. But then Malag- Malagusto missed, a, missed a head open up. goal. Yeah. Would have um, been his first goal for Chelsea as well. I know. I so, know. that's a bit sad for Chelsea fans, but that last chance for Arsenal... And, oh, uh, uh, Arteta's on the ground going no. if Trossard didn't touch that Havertz was tapping it into oh, him imagine or, um, I would have been someone was at the back livid. post as well I would have been livid Kai Havertz scoring he the 90th minute winner at the I know. Bridge. <laughs> and I he would have given off. us a sh- he also gave a shush to Stanford Bridge and then his goal got ruled out so yeah. cop that Havertz that's a couple of hatred in the game from Chelsea players well, wait, I swear the old thing of I don't care. I reckon you're allowed to celebrate against your old team, but he has celebrated against Chelsea before. Yeah, but it's not like, a good look. It's not a good look. Yeah, but like you can celebrate. I think. Yeah. Like if you score a 90th minute winning against your yeah, old club, right. ball means celebrate. Exactly. But I wouldn't like shush. No, don't shush your former club. The other thing he won, he helped us win the Champions League. So yeah, I'll respect him a little bit. He, he helped us win the Champions League. Anyway, last one. This is a big one in uh, Premier League news around the grounds. <laughs> EPL ref David Coote suspended after making derogatory comments about Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp. So mm. he was, uh, yeah, had a big night, yep. uh, shall we say. Someone filmed him. Was it his mate or did not really come out? I think it was. I think I don't think it was a mate, but I think it was just like a, it was a house party. I think it was just someone who was yes, there. Yes, he was very intoxicated. Uh, or on other, other... Other things, uh, extracurricular activities. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but 
Yeah, which is this is just not a good look for. He was crossing the he was crossing the other sort of white line. Yes, he, he was. He was. I don't know if we can talk about that. <laughs> uh, allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> with uh, Wayne Carey, I reckon he hangs out with him. Uh, yeah, but he's, yeah, he's he's in trouble. He's banned for one week, which I think is going to be extended. He's yeah called out Liverpool saying he hates Liverpool. He hates Jurgen Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp in particular. He, yeah, yeah, we probably don't have to repeat what he said, but he wasn't very nice. We use that term a lot here in Australia. As a, as a nice term. <laughs> do we? <laughs> we yeah. do. Rhymes yeah. with runt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did say that, which is yeah, really bad. You you don't want a referee coming out and showing hatred towards a team mm. when they they've ref ref uh yeah, refereed them refereed them before yeah. and a lot of Liverpool fans would say... Liverpool fans were quick to David point out Kuhn the, the probably games. probably cost them the title when he called that handball, was it? The exact games. Um, there's been multiple scenarios, but oh. I I doubt he'll be refereeing a Liverpool game for a very, very, very yeah. long time. So, like, I understand that referees at the highest of any sport, AFL, we follow here, cricket, football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, they obviously have supported a team growing up. Particularly in England, I've, yes. I've met some AFL umpires or some referees in different sports, and they yep. go, we just got to get rid of that bias where yep. we don't even talk. Unless we're talking to our close mates or our family, mm. we're not going to talk about this at all. Yep. Don't even talk about hating another team because then that's just a really, really bad look because then if something happens in the past like this one, yeah, that's that's a bad look. look that, um, he, he's going to be biased against Liverpool. That's what people will think now. Yeah. Well, Ange Postacoglu is a... a Liverpool, he, he was a Liverpool supporter. fan growing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so... Yep. Um, but he wouldn't say anything would he bad, talk about bad about the, Everton. No. 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 Yeah. So, so this was just really bad. And I don't know if the EPL has handled it well yet because one week isn't. Absolutely isn't. not. And the, it, just say he just keeps it. I don't think he should keep his job. It's just a really bad look, but I'll have to yeah. wait and see. Agreed. Like, yeah, I don't think he should keep his job either. But it'd be funny. Like, I think right. you said before the show, it'd be funny if. That's just a refereeing they go, standard. They go like, uh, you can just ref every game but Liverpool games, but then that's still a bit dodgy, I reckon. I, th- I think that's probably, if they're going to keep him on, that's the fairest way to go about it. <laughs> that's so weird, though. He's, he's probably banning for the season and then he can never referee Liverpool in the, in the future. Yeah, honestly, fair. Because yeah. you can't make those comments. Because then it's you just see every call yeah, he makes every will feel biased. Yeah. Every card. So yeah. I feel like even now, he has to go, but we'll have to wait and see. Next mm. couple of weeks, we'll talk about that. All right, that's Around the Grounds. We had lots to talk about there. Let's get into our favorite part of the show, the back or lay bets, thanks to Betfair, the only place to back or lay bet on the APL this season. We're going to have a look How at- How did we do last week? Actually, that's why. Last week, yes. We should talk about last week. Really well. Really Four well. of six with uh, Tony Hargreaves, the t- expert tips, or as you like to call him. Uh, T-Dog. T-Dog, yeah. T-Dog. T-Dog. But he let just... us down. <laughs> a little bit. Oh. A little bit, because we went two from two uh, together. Uh, then he went for, uh, what did he have? Two from four, which is all right. So four from six, the whole show. Yep. Picking, uh, you pick Brentford in terms of the laying backs. Yep. You pick Newcastle to win as well. At, at Forest, yeah. Fulham. So all three of those are like mid-table teams where you go, oh, this is actually a tricky one. Picked yep. all of them. Yep. And then we both picked the Arsenal, uh, including Tony as well. The Arsenal versus Chelsea draw. He laid Arsenal. Yep. So perfect. Happy days. So perfect. some really, really, really good odds there. So yeah, make sure you check out uh, Tony Hargrove's tips, expert tips on betfair.com.au and our ones each week. Every Wednesday, mm. we're giving some tips. So this week- We're doing it. We're starting with the EP- EPL title handicap. To explain this a little bit, it gets a little bit confusing, but we can explain it a little bit. Do you want, yes. to, do you want to explain it a little bit? Well, we can explain it a little bit. It's basically your your team or a club yep. is given uh, a points difference. So say- At the start plus, of the season. Plus 20. Yep. And they just have to be within, that means they have to be within 20 points of whoever, whoever wins. wins the league. Yep. So say City win the league with 90 points. Chelsea have a plus 20 points difference. They just got to be within 20 points of Manchester City. Yep. So, so it's a, yeah, it's a fun, it's a really fun market because obviously because you can bet on teams, the mid, lower teams, yeah, mid table teams, yep. lower table teams to be within teams like Liverpool at the moment, Man City, City yeah, yeah, and it, it's sort of like you already know at the start of a season at the moment that it's going to be Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool are going to be up there, but yeah. then these ones are sort of other bets you can back and and lay and things like that. So, yeah. Marcus, what are you backing for your EPL title handicap? This is a really good one. <laughs> it <laughs> is a really good one. Yeah, Liverpool who are currently top of the league. Yeah. City are the benchmark at the moment, yep. uh, according to the Betfair Exchange. So Liverpool plus nine points at $8.60. They're just going to be nine that points of so whoever good, wins the league. Yep. So as long as they're within nine points, that already means a 14-point turnaround currently mm-hmm. because they are five points ahead of Manchester City in second. Mm-hmm. So let's say Manchester City win the league. That's already a 14-point turnaround. Yeah, I think no matter what, at this stage of the season, they're going to be top two. 
I, yeah. I, Liverpool. Yeah. I, I yep. think they're going to win the title from here because five points is a lot. And Liverpool, I don't know, they're just playing a lot more consistently. Consistently, yep. They look a, a lot better defensively. They've and only City, conceded six goals. More importantly, City, the teams that are chasing them, aren't as good as they were last season. Yep. The likes of City and Arsenal, who will likely be the challengers for the title. And you're not going to need as many points to win the title this season as True. previous seasons, we believe. Yep. So... To be within nine points, I reckon that's that an is absolute so lock. That is a lock. I really like that. $8.60. Beautiful on yeah. uh, Betfair. My one. So we can have a few winners in here in this uh, title handicap race. I'm backing Fulham plus 42. So it's a bit mm. different to the plus nine at five bucks on Betfair. I just think they're going really, really well. Right now, they're yep. currently, how many? I didn't check that one actually. They are currently 10 points behind. So in seventh. Yep. Flying compared to last year. They were they were pretty bad last year. 13th. They've picked up uh, Mill Smith Rowe. He's been one of the best. Yes. I'd say. Top few pickups over of the, the season. Offseason. Maybe yeah. even maybe even the best pickup. Oh, geez, Arsenal could have used Smith Rowe when Odegaard was yeah. injured for for a few weeks. Yeah, so. they'll be yeah kicking themselves against that one. He's been so good. Harry yep. Wilson's kicked a few goals the last couple of weeks. Yep. Jimenez, even uh, since his injuries, he's had so many different injuries. That head injury, he's had an, I think he had a leg one. injury. The head injury was the worst one. Yeah. Uh, he's looked. He's getting some assists, which is even not like him. He usually yep. finishes for goals, but the last couple of weeks he's got an assist. Last season, so this is the plus forty two. They need to be within. I reckon it'll be around. Uh, I reckon it, it could be less than that 40. So I'm happy with the 42. Last season, they were 44 points behind yep. Man City, who won the title. I think they are a lot better than two they points They just got better. to be two points better than yeah. they were last season. They've recruited well. They have been really good at Craven Cottage at home. And They've, again, whoever wins the league won't get as many points as City did last year. So yep. you're even looking at an even smaller smaller change there. So Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm really happy with that one. Plus 42, the title handicap bets. So make sure you get around that on Love Betfair. That. There we go. Yep. All right, we've got a couple more here. Future picks. This is going to be to do with the uh, table, table picks. This will finishes. be a little bit more straightforward. Yep. So uh, what do you got, Marcus? Uh, chucking a lay bet there. We haven't oh. had a lay bet yet. Yeah, so. All right. so I'm going to lay a team. <laughs> Which team? I'll also refer to and look like a bottle. <laughs> It'll be Tottenham. Like a, hey, Spursy. <laughs> yeah. Instead of instead of the the chicken on the beach ball for their logo, they can get the uh, a bottle on a beach ball. <laughs> a bottle on the beach ball. Um, yeah, I'm going Spurs not to finish in the top four. So yep. laying a top four finish at four dollars sixty. Oh, that's really 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 good. As we've talked about, they've been so inconsistent, and if you want to finish in the top four, you have to be consistent. Yeah. Uh, especially with so many great great teams in the league and more teams emerging, like the likes of Villa last year. Chelsea uh, are on the Newcastle way back up. Newcastle this yep. season before. Brighton have done it. Yep. Um, and Chelsea are on the way up, as you mentioned. So Tottenham are currently, they're just the three points behind the top four. But again, looking at the top, top four, I hope mm -hmm. it's going to be, well, you can say Liverpool, City and Arsenal pretty much locks for the top four. And yep, it, that basically means six other clubs, four to six other clubs are fighting for that fourth position and I just don't think Tottenham yeah, are the ones. Yeah, I'd say Chelsea have looked a lot more consistent. Brighton have looked a lot, obviously not to have, but we're predicting they might drop off a little bit Not. Yeah. I but even still, Villa will finish above them probably. Yeah. Oh, I could still see Tottenham finishing above Villa the way that Villa are playing, but again, there's there's not there's only probably one spot in that top four and yeah, Chelsea available. right now is probably that fourth spot, I'd say. Yeah, at the moment. Yeah. No, I really I really like that. $4.60 and just get, you, you get to back... Lay, lay against Spurs and you get to back them being Spursy, which is the easiest bet I reckon ever. So 100%. That's pretty and, good. And you're going to show the mid-table club some Yeah, love? why not? Why not? We love knots. Everyone's loving knots. They rise up the table after fifth. Obviously lost on the weekend, but really good. I'm backing knots, Forest, Nottingham Forest, to have a top 10 finish. So I think that's mm. it's really good. Top half finish at $2.30. Now they're often down the bottom of the table, knots, but they've started really well. Only lost one game at home so far. They're, yep. they're going to have a lot of draws and a lot of wins at home because the city ground is absolutely pumping in the moment. Mm. Chris Wood. Awesome form. He's second in goals Superb. to Haaland. If, if you said yep. at the start of the season, we're going Haaland, Chris Wood. Chris Wood's <laughs> like 30-something, the Kiwi. Yeah. He's absolutely killing it. So uh, I'm actually tempted to 32 currently. see how many goals he's going to score for New Zealand this Turns weekend. 33 next month. That is nuts. And he's, he's probably in the form of his life at the moment because mm. he couldn't do anything at Burnley when he was there. Yeah, no. Uh, that was just shambles that time. He's, he's been around the championship and, and the Premier yeah. League for like a long while now. Yes, he's finally hit his stride and yeah. so is Knotts. This is, I love watching Knotts. They're, they're just playing so attacking. Obviously lost to Newcastle on the weekend. You predicted that one. Yeah. But top half, if I'm looking at the top half right now, I'd say they're slightly better than Brentford in my opinion because Brentford are just conceding too many goals. Who are 11th? Same as Bournemouth. Yeah, who are 11th? Bournemouth are 12th. So I, I reckon the top 10 right now is is like locked. Not the order. But the in terms of the top ten, the only thing is it's so close. It's so close. I know. From I know. from Chelsea in third yeah. to Manchester United in thirteenth is mm. four points. Yeah, 
Um, it just shows how crazy difference it is. Yep. So, like, if Tottenham beat uh, Ipswich, they would have been third. They yeah, lost, now they're 10th. That's nuts. I agree, yeah. It's going to chop and change a lot. So there'll be times, if you're backing this bet, you can have a look at, oh, crap, they're in 11th or 6th or it'll third. Be a, it'll be a wild ride. It'll be a wild sure. ride, but I really think their confidence is up. They're playing so well. Morgan Gibbs, why? you got our knees, so good. Ward Prowse is Ward now Prowse. at the club. Hudson Adore, your man. They've just got so... Oh, I love Hudson Adore. I keep forgetting about him. They've just got so much depth that they didn't have in the past. So top half so, finish yeah. is really doable, especially at the start of the season. We said the likes of West Ham, Crystal Palace could be up there. Yeah, they've been horrible. So yeah, I'm pretty and happy. Fi- and to finish mid table last season, for context, mm. or to finish yep. inside the top ten, you needed 49 points with Crystal Palace. They're already on okay. 19 points. Yeah. Um. Through so, the third. so they're ahead of the curve at the moment. They're ahead of the curve at the yep. moment. So okay. don't mind that. Cool. All right. Perfect. We're going to finish off here with some international break matches. We don't always like the international break because we love watching the EPL. I hate the international break. <laughs> but we've got some bets in there. We've got some future bets in there. Yep. Keep an eye on matches. That's what we're going to finish off here. We'll start off. We're Australian. Socceroos. We're Socceroos are taking on Saudi Arabia. This is a huge match because uh, big, Saudi big Arabia have been a really good team in this uh, World Cup qualification group. What do we think is going to well, happen they've been, they've been underwhelming, but they, they always... There. They're always Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. And yep. they always qualify for the World Cup. Um, and look, Japan have uh, Japan Japan been away awesome, in yeah. first in 10 points. Yep. But Australia, Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain all equal, uh, all equal on five points Ooh. with India and China. Uh, Indonesia, sorry, and yep. China uh, following behind on three points, which makes this game even more important. Top two automatically qualify. Otherwise, third and fourth, you've got to go through a grueling playoff. So, yes. Uh, if we can get a win here at home, um, just across the road. Uh, yes, I missed Amy out on Park, tickets on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, which would be a massive, massive game. And then obviously Bahrain, who are also on five points, we play next week, week, the week next later. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. But so that'll, that'll be a huge one. But this is a massive game because this, this, could, so more this could decide our fate of easily getting through, not easily, but getting to the World Cup. Because you've got to go through this whole other phase. You've got to go through like other tournaments and other things like that. Yep. Like when we had to uh, beat Peru Peru. in that penalty shit. Oh my God, that was yeah. that was crazy. The, the great wiggle step the, uh, up. Yeah. Andrew Redmayne. Andrew, Andrew Redmayne. That was nuts. But hopefully we don't have to go through that part, pathway again because that was hard. That was tricky. Mm, mm. So hopefully we can beat Saudi Arabia here. Last time I just had a look, They these two teams played. Saudi Arabia won 1-0. That yep. was over in Saudi Arabia. I'm pretty sure. And, and, and also we've got a lot of young talent. Yeah. So in two years' yeah. time, a lot of these players like Iron Kunda, when the World Cup's there, Garrett yeah. Cole, yeah. Jakarti, oh yeah, um, true. So a lot of midfielders they're gonna mature. Aiden O'Neill as well. Yep. Um, yeah, they're gonna mature, and you're gonna see more so better than what you're seeing right now out. Yeah. Of at the World Cup will be awesome. So hopefully we win this one, then we get through to the World Cup. Would it be beautiful? Yep. Next one we want to keep an eye on, Greece versus England. I just chucked this in there because England, last time they played, lost to Greece at Wembley. <laughs> at Wembley. And now Nuts. it's back in Greece. I, I think... In, revenge? Oh, wait, we didn't actually do a prediction for that last one. Uh, we'll I'm, go Socceroos. I'm going to go Socceroos 1-0, just purely at home. Yeah, I'm going to go 1-0. What do you reckon? Uh, 2-1 Socceroos. 2-1? Nice. Yep. Greece versus England. Yeah, it's pretty funny that they lost last time for the... But... <laughs> you never know. This could be on the cards again. You're England okay. should be beating them, but there are a lot of big players missing for England. A okay. lot of players have pulled out of injured, international duty. Injured or rest, in, in terms resting of, up? They, yeah, they don't want to be They yeah. want to be fit for the upcoming Premier yep. League games. Obviously, huge clustered fixture in late November, yep. December, yep. Uh, and even early January. Uh, so the likes of Cole Palmer, Levi Colwell, Bukayo Saka, all pulled out of England duty so far, and there's, there's a host of others as well. Okay, there you go. So... Are we still leaning towards England? I think England will be Yes, I, think, I still think England should win this game. I wouldn't be surprised if they get a few like free kicks or Would penalties. this be Thomas Tuchel's first game? Oh, it is, I think. Tell me, Tickles. You're yeah, there. so it won't be... Uh, <laughs> who, was the, who was the caretaker? Um, oh, I can't even remember. Who I can't remember his name. It'll come to me, though. But, but they, yeah, Thomas yeah. Tuchel, that, they might have a new style and it'll be actually interesting. They'll we experiment picks, a bit. Yeah, we pick some things like that. So, yeah, that's a, definitely And one a thing we know about a Thomas Tuchel team is that they're very solid defensively. Yes, yes. So this could be, I reckon it could be low scoring, maybe mm. one or two. I'm going to go two nil to England. I don't, I don't know if Greece can score a goal again. Last time yeah, they were really I'll, good, but I'll, I'll, I'm backing you here. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go three one England actually. Three one England. Greece to back a goal. Nice. Next one I was put in there because it's a fun matchup. Belgium versus Italy. Yep. We we love a bit good of uh, Lukaku up up front. You got Italy. Probably just, two underwhelming top you, nations. Yes. In, in Since uh, Italy have won, what was that? Euros. What was that? A few years ago now. They've been very yeah. underwhelming, not qualifying Jeez, well, for the yeah, big tournaments. Almost, yeah, well, it's five years ago now. Yeah, so I think I'd be leaning towards Italy just because Belgium have been very underwhelming in, in the big matches. Yeah. But it is in Belgium, so what, what do you reckon? Uh, I'll play it safe here, back the draw. Yep. 
Probably your probably a one all. One all. All right. Yeah. I think like there's, there's some in, uh, Italian national players that are playing well for their clubs, particularly um, in Lazio who are playing Lazio, really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top of the Europa League. Don't mind that. Fiorentina are, are doing really well as well. Yep. In the league, so nice. Don't mind it. Cool. Uh, next one I put in there. I just looked up the biggest matches: Venezuela versus Brazil. I know we're not that, <laughs> show, that knowledgeable. Show on South it. America some love. Yeah, we're gonna show South America some love. I'm looking at the uh, World Cup qualifiers. Brazil are fourth, so usually mm. they're in the top two with Argentina. It's just like a lock. They yeah. need a win. Uh, I think that they don't need a win, but just to confirm that they're definitely gonna qualify for the World Cup and things like that. Venezuela are eighth, but they've had some a lot of draws. They mm. they get a lot of draws in this group. They've had. Uh, how many draws have they had? They've had five draws out of the ten matches yeah, well. as well. So they can they can hold on, play really defensively. I'm still leading towards Brazil. I don't like a few of yeah, their players. Sure. I don't yeah. like Vinny Jr. running around. I don't like Neymar. I don't know. I don't mm. know is he, is he, like, actually, he's back from injury. They, they have one. They have one back to back games. However, Brazil. Brazil. Okay. Um, so they're starting to hit their stride a little bit better. Yep. Um, but they've geez, they've got so much talent. And also, got to keep an eye out as Chelsea fans mm. on the young boy uh, Estevão William. Yes, who is killing yes. breaking records in, in Brazil. Yes. Uh, he broke Neymar's record for the most goal and assist by a teenager. Good call, good call. Uh, in the Brazilian league, and he's on his way to Chelsea when he turns 18. That would That's nuts. How old is he, how old is he now? 17. 17, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Chelsea bought him when he was 16. How good is that? So, yeah, yeah well, definitely. This last game, I don't <laughs> know why you've chucked this last game in here, stats guys. Oh, the powerhouse clash of San Marino versus Gibraltar. Get up and about, set your alarms. What time? Name, name one San Marino or Gibraltar player. Uh, oh, you know, uh, Georgios. Yeah, yeah Georgios. Yeah, Georgios, Georgios yeah. Costas. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, go, he goes off, uh, Georgios. Uh, yep. No, uh, I, <laughs> I just put this in there because everyone talks them up, San Marino. Every, sorry, talks about them. Because of because they never ever their win. lack of winning. They've games. had one win in 143 matches, I think, it's since 2004. Yeah, so that that was a, their first ever win was two months ago. Everyone wow. was going nuts. I, their Twitter account, if anyone wants to go on it, is so funny. When they score a Love goal, it. it's just a paragraph of like someone typing like like this, and it's, it's very very <laughs> funny. So check out San Marino. I just put this in there because Gibraltar are a very small country as well. Yep. San Marino can win and qualify to the next stage of the Nations League, That's which they've nuts. never done before. They've won one game in 100. They've won one game in 20 years yeah. and can qualify for the next let, let me have a look, Unreal. actually. So where are they? There's so many groups. So because they're, they're in like the bottom group, there's only three teams in yeah. their group, whereas every other group has four. So they got lucky. But if they win, they can qualify. Gibraltar have qualified out of the uh, this little group before. It would just be awesome. They've, if, Last if time these teams win. played, it was a nail-biting 1-0 <laughs> win to Gibraltar. Oh. <laughs> oh identical stats. 11 shots, two on target for I'm both sides. 6.45 a.m. on Saturday I'm morning. I'm <laughs> get up. Set your alarms. Get up. But genuinely, people will be talking about this if San Marino win just because they've never qualified or won. They've, they've never won two games in a year. In a, yeah, home ground so, advantage as well. Home ground advantage. Watch it random. So, yeah, watch this space. Anyway, we'll be watching uh, that one and the Socceroos matches as well in Australia. Of course. We're, very, we're very excited for that. All right, I'm calling it. That's the final whistle for the Football Today uh, podcast brought to you by Betfair. Check out a lot of the fun videos we've been doing. We just did a higher or lower Google searches for EPL. We're going to be doing uh, a lot of fun ones, blind rankings, everything you want to see on the socials. Get around the show. Get in the comments. Uh, We want to talk to you in the comments. Send in any questions. Thank you very much to Joe behind the camera. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks. That's Nice, Nice kit. Thank you very much to me. And that's another episode of Football Today done. We're out. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.